This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning's newest tools strengthen your team on every level. Insights provides an overview of where your team needs the most help, while Cyber Skills fortifies skills for non IT pros. Try it for yourself, then bring your team along. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for a free two week trial. I looked through the, all the links you sent, and one of them that stood out to me is no user accounts by design that I hate user accounts everywhere. I, and I, I mean, we're subscribed to way more things than we could ever begin to control way too many passwords and logins. The, the problem with user accounts to me, and I'm speaking personally here is that I'm always a user of somebody else's stuff. I'm, I'm always a subordinate in some way. And I know realize the client server model basically requires something like that. But I'm wondering if you could give us a bit more of a bit on what the thinking behind that is, how that works. And, yeah, for uh, sure. It's a big sell for me, frankly. Yeah, I am. Um, I think, you, you know, it started out just because it was the easiest way to get the thing running. So I would say I wasn't involved in the very beginning in the first couple of years. So I don't know exactly what the decision was to, you know, not start with user accounts. We did have like a wiki and stuff. In the beginning but that was not for like apps um and from the beginning i mean part of the reason why i got interested was the so kieran gutnick who the founder like set off from the beginning in his first post that this is that privacy was part of this um so it wasn't just about free software but, but private and so uh based on that we started to see oh wait this if we're if we really want to build a private system then those the user accounts are kind of a, um, a liability. It's something we have, you know, it's data we have to protect. It's data we have to manage. It's, you know, now with uh, the EU GDPR, uh, it's a fair amount of work because you have to say when people request to uh, data, you know, that you delete all their data, you have to actually know where all their data is and delete it. Um, so that's where, I mean, it started from, and then we were fortunate to get, so find some overlap with this open tech fund, which is looking to fund privacy, uh, like in app distribution. So in places where people are getting in trouble for the apps they use. Uh, and so we got quite a bit of money. Um, I think it was about 400, so $470,000 uh, for a two-year project to really kind of build out that idea. Can we really build an app store that doesn't have any idea who the user is? Um, and so that was what, 2015 to 2017? And I mean, after it's grown a lot since then. So I think it's, by the time I got to this blog post, you know, now I think I'm sure, yes, you can, you can build, not only can you build an app store that has no idea who the users are, you can build a lot of services and there's other good examples too. I think Jitsi is one of my favorites. It's video chat before Jitsi, in my experience, you had to sign up, you know, all sorts of things before you could even make a connection to someone. Jitsi is just a link, open the link in the browser, whoever opens the link, they're in the room. And if you want to control the room, you can do that separately, but you can also just give someone a link who has ever has the link, you're in the room and, and that, to me, really, I think changed the whole way people ex expectations of video chat because before people expected signups and profiles. And now I don't think you can have a video chat platform that doesn't allow you to just click a link and join a room. Uh, there's certainly a few that are trying really hard to make it impossible to use them without having an account. But uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> right, so, uh, so, so that... I mean, the big ones use use this, you know, Google for, does this now. Zoom does this yep. now. I, uh, so, the, you know, I'm a big fan of that, uh, having no user accounts, uh, because who needs a user account if you're not tracking the user? Uh, you know, a, a apt doesn't do it in Debian, so why should Android do it on Android? Um, the, 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 that does raise two questions, though. Uh, one of them is to do with how I move to a new phone and take all my apps with me. Uh, mm -hmm. And the second is what you do about uh, legislation like chat control in Europe that's going to want you to uh, <laughs> understand who your user is. So the, let's, let's look at the first one because it's nicer. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so yeah. 
uh, assuming I'm using F Droid, how how do I go to a new phone? Do I get some kind of manifest of which apps I'm using, or do I have to go find them all and install them all afresh on the new device? So yeah, I mean that question is a few different answers depending on what kind of device you're starting with. So one of the things we're our our kind of uh, basically the Android ROM projects have really developed in the last few years to the point where you know I my whole family, me wife, kids, we all use Google free devices for years now, and so that is kind of become that has become our main use case that we work on because it's also what you know dog fooding is what we use. So in that case, so it, um, the Calix Institute runs. Calyx OS, which is a Android ROM focused on privacy, which includes F Droid by default. Uh, and in that case, they also develop um, a, a system wide backup app that's integrated. So, you know, it has the permissions to, to back up all your apps, all your app data. Um, but it's really nice because you can um, back up to a USB thumb drive. You can back up to uh, your own next cloud, or you can back up to other cloud services. Um, so in that case, you have this whole system wide res uh, restore, but you have to, that all will only work really on like Calyx OS to Calyx OS. So this is basically in effect, you get this same feature when you use a Google device. Like if you have a Google device, you can restore a Google to another Google device, but you could not restore a Google device to a lineage device. So Calyx OS has done that by integrating all these pieces. Of course, it's all free software. Uh, so other people have um, adopted um, this backup app. And unfortunately, I'm spacing the name of the backup app, but it's kind of the standard free software backup app for Android these days. So it shouldn't be hard to find for people. Um, so then there's one of the users that we want to support more, but <laughs> now that we all have Google free devices, we're not as good at is like we want to support the people who have a Google device are not technical and no, but know how to install an app. Um, so they can install F droid and, um, and, and we want to make that experience as, as good as possible. But because we don't have, because F droid does not have privileged access just by the nature of the security structure of Android, we have very limited options on backing things up. So there is a very rudimentary, like you can export a list uh, from within F droid of like your install history. And then there's actually, um, uh, actually I think there's a couple of ways to restore from that, but uh, it's not, yeah, it's that's a user experience needs work. I mean, really that's something we love contributions on because it seems like, I think this happens in a lot of free software projects. People come to, the project because they're interested in free software, but maybe they're, you know, have only ever used Windows or Mac. Uh, and then they can say, oh, I got it working on Windows, but then they get more and more into free software and then they switch to a f free platform. And then the Windows and the Mac experience suffers. But <laughs> I don't, this is, you know, people are getting into this because of software freedom. They, they, uh, so we are always looking for people to contribute uh making f -Droid work better on the google devices uh so we can get more people easily switching <laughs> 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 <laughs>